Uh, well, good morning, uh, not quite afternoon. I'm Kathy Clark, and um, I have been a member of House Rabbit Connection for I don't know how many years either. Um, I have not got a whole lot of practice talking to adults. Most of the people I've spoken to over the years are probably fifth grade and under, so I expect you all to behave quite well. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, what I'd like to start with, my, my topic is uh, gastrointestinal disease in rabbits. Uh, I'm sure you're all quite aware of what that entails and have been through some horror stories yourself, is my guess. But I want to start by having you all imagine a very ancient rabbit, a wild rabbit, living outside somewhere. Uh, maybe, you know, 2,000 years ago. And this rabbit has to have certain qualities to survive in the wild. Um, rabbits are prey animals, as you know. They need to be able to get away fast. They need to have a very small, compact structure. And they are, um, have become a very, very efficient animal at digesting food. The reason is to keep their body weight low and uh, to keep them out of the line of uh, pre prey dumb. A rabbit in the wild only comes out in the morning and the evening. And I'm going to put up all these great words because I love words. And that is crepuscular. Crepuscular means found in the morning and the evening. And um, if you ever go a nice place, anybody go out down to Hammonasset? It's a great place to see bunnies, and if you see bunnies at Hammond Acid, most of the time you're going to see them before 10 o'clock in the morning and in the late afternoon. Um, yeah. They eat all their food, unlike our rabbits who will eat all day long, of course. Um, they eat most of their food at two periods of the day. Baby bunnies, which I guess we don't have that much experience with since most of the rabbits we get, we do not want them to have baby bunnies. Baby bunnies. Um, which are very, very hard to rescue, which I have tried and had very little success over the years. They'll do great for a long time and then they, they don't do great. Baby bunnies do all their nursing in about a five minute period once a day. So when the mother rabbit does not spend much time in the nest, uh, they nurse their babies for about five minutes once a day. All of that milk turns into what's called a milk curd in the baby bunny's stomach and it stays there all day and provides nutrition. It's a very, very different system than any animal in the world. So the adult rabbit has kind of a similar system where everything goes in really fast at two times a day. Of course, our rabbits don't have the same thing, but trying to adapt what was designed by whatever greater power you believe in for a rabbit in the wild is what we have to contend with with rabbits that live with us. So we're taking a system that was designed to create an animal that could survive under adverse conditions to live with us and eat food that we hand to it. Um, another thing that works is that if there is a drought or bad weather, the really, really efficient way rabbits digest their food helps them survive during those circumstances. Um, it's called a highly efficient digestive system and it allows the rabbit to spend a minimum time above ground. So they eat, and it's all processed very, very efficiently. I loved a term that was in one of the books I was looking to research, and that was, they called the rabbit's digestive tract exquisitely complicated. And I just thought that was just wonderful. It's designed to obtain the maximum nutrition from the fiber. So fiber's a huge word, but by the time we're done, hopefully we all understand what the fiber does. And after I read this, I really thought, when I was in college, I owned a series of MG sports cars. I don't know if anybody's owned MGs, and now I own a Mini Cooper, so I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, and sports cars are really, really fun. They're really efficient when they're running well, but they're really, really sensitive. So I started to think of rabbits as the sports cars of the animal world for a lot of reasons. Um, okay. Now, here's another word we're going to put up here. And that word, oops, my pen. Here it is. Here's another word, and that is a hind gut fermenter. Sounds like beer. <laughs> okay. 
Now, you've probably heard that rabbits are compared to horses a lot as far as how their GI tracts work. And, and there's a lot of similarities. I did learn back in my ancient days, speaking of ancient days, in veterinary school, you had to learn about everything. Although they didn't teach us much about rabbits, they taught us a lot about horses, even if you weren't going into um, horse medicine. And horses and rabbits are a lot the same, but in a lot of ways, they're not the same. Um, they both use a lot of fiber in their diet. If they don't have a lot of fiber in their diet, they can get really, really sick. If a horse eats a lot of grain really fast, it can go into a colic like a rabbit can. Um, but the big difference is that in a horse, the fiber goes in there and it sits in their cecum, which is like this big. It's like unbelievably huge. It sits in their cecum and stays there a long time. In a rabbit, the system is designed for the fiber to get the heck out of there. And the reason the fiber gets the heck out of there is so the rabbit doesn't have to carry it around where it's slowing the rabbit down weight-wise when it needs, when the rabbit needs to get the heck out of there. We think of fiber, it's great, it's great, it's great. But in, in fact, when it gets into the rabbit, what the rabbit system wants to do is get it out of there. Um, does everybody know what peristalsis is? Mm -hmm. Okay, should I write down peristalsis? You got peristalsis. All right, we're all good in peristalsis. All right. Um, Peristalsis is the movement of the intestinal tract. There's muscles, they're called smooth muscles. Uh, they have a whole different system. They're working on their own. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to think, okay, peristalsis, let's go. Just should happen if everything is working right. And when you have a good appetite, your peristalsis is working. If you're looking at all those treats over there, peristalsis gets moving even before you get something in there. So your peristalsis and your appetite work together. So a healthy rabbit has a good appetite, peristalsis is moving. An unhealthy, sick rabbit, it's kind of what comes first. Is the appetite crummy and the peristalsis slows down, or is the peristalsis crummy and the appetite slows down? So this other system, we have the fiber system, and we also have the re-ingestion of cecotropes. I'm going to spell that. I know you all, you all better know what a cecotrope is, but I'm going to put that up there too. Ecotrope. Again, no other animal really has this system. Not a guinea pig, not a mouse. Coprophagy, whoops, here's another one, hold on. We're moving up with these 50 cent words. We're getting rid of crepuscular. And we're going to coprophagy. Okay, coprophagy, in most of the other animals I see, is a really bad thing. Everyone hates it. The idea of eating nice your own feces, not a fun thing. The dogs, cats, cats, are, cats don't do that that I know of. Not anyone's complained about it. But dogs do this all the time. There's probably some back when a mother dog has puppies, she eats the baby's feces to get rid of them to keep things clean. There's no nutritional thing for it. But with a rabbit, eating their own feces is a huge part of what makes them an efficient <coughs> digester and how their system works. Whereas in every other animal, it's a pathologic thing. In a rabbit, it's how things work. Um, so coprophagy in a rabbit is re-ingestion of nutrient-rich cecotropes, which is another important adaptation by wild rabbits to survive in the wild. They are getting twice the nutrition out of something they eat. It gets recycled. So it goes through once, gets to a certain part of digestion, and then they get it again, and they get to not waste a single thing. So again, it's a very, very interesting, different, different concept. Um, they get a large, so lots of food goes in, it gets through really quick, it increases the amount of energy that a rabbit can store, and it minimizes the need to store the fiber. Now we're going to talk about stress very briefly, kind of in the middle of, before we get really down into this picture that I gave you. Stress makes the GI tract not work very well. For example, how do I feel right before this meeting? Do I feel like eating a cookie? No, because I have stress. My GI tract really can't handle the stress and the digestion. And in rabbits who are stressed by losing their home, losing their companion, going to the vet, you know a million things that are going to stress a rabbit. All of those things can make the GI tract just slow down because out in the wild, what's going to cause stress? A predator. 
And so when that happens, the rabbits wants to concentrate on getting out of there again, and their GI tract can really <coughs> stop working properly. So the same thing happens in our situations. Also, again, I think I have an audience full of people who know what to feed a rabbit, but a lot of the rabbits that I see are really, really on crappy diets, and that is stressful to their GI tracts. 